Hi everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. Happy Friday to all of you, I hope you've been having a wonderful week. As you know, normally on a Friday I do like to try and post some kind of vlog where I share snippets of what I've been up to over the week. But this week instead I'm doing another book related video and sharing my summer book haul with you. I've got some fabulous titles that I've been buying over the past few weeks that I thought you would all be interested in seeing too. And the reason I'm doing this this week is because I just haven't been up to vlogging. It's been a odd week in many ways. Very busy because I've been working on some big Instagram campaigns. One will go live soon after this video goes up and that's just been keeping me very busy and I haven't had a great week personally because I've had some trouble with my with a wisdom tooth that is coming in and it's been really painful and this cheek uh, puffed up a bit and I really just wasn't in the mood to pick up a vlogging camera and I've not been sleeping hardly at all because of this toothache and fortunately though now it has all calmed down. I finally slept well last night and I'm feeling a lot better but it's just been one of those weeks and it's been very difficult to vlog. So I'm sharing some more books with you instead today and hopefully I'll get the chance to vlog a bit over this weekend. But anyway I'll get on with sharing these titles with you as I'm really excited about these and I can't wait to show you what I've been buying. So first of all I've been wanting to collect some of these titles that are in the Pan Heritage Classics series published by Pan Macmillan. They've, they're just really attractive and they've got some very interesting titles. Some of them I already own. They've republished a lot of golden age style mysteries and a few other interesting titles, quite a few by Gerald Durrell for instance, he wrote My Family and Other Animals and they've published some of his other work and short stories and things like that and then a few mysteries and then a few sort of odd titles as well and I've been meaning to buy more of them for ages and I just keep forgetting about it but I decided that I really did want some of these so I got them for myself. This is one I'm really excited to read it's Dr. Finley's Casebook by A.J. Cronin and this one I'm admitting is a bit of research for the Comfort Book Club. I'm thinking this could be a title that I pick sometime next year and I'm reading it now to see if it is going to be one I want to choose. I remember absolutely loving the Dr. Finley stories that were told on BBC Radio a few years ago. I listened to them when I was quite young and I just loved them. They're very quiet, gentle, funny stories about a GP in Scotland and all of the eccentric patients he has and all of the stories around sort of village life in Scotland. And I just remember really enjoying these but I don't think I've actually read the book properly before. So I want to read it now and see how much I like it and if I think it would be a good comforting sort of read to pick for the book club. So I'm really looking forward to getting to this one. And then I also got this in the Pan Heritage series. It's The Case of the Missing Bronte by Robert Bernard. You know how interested I am in picking up books that are Bronte related. There I think are a couple Bronte sort of mysteries that I've read and I always find them quite fun. This one too has added charm for me because it's set in the Yorkshire Dales. It's about a detective and his wife I think who are traveling back to London from Northumberland and their car breaks down and they end up staying overnight in this little village in the Yorkshire Dales and there in the local pub or somewhere like that they bump into a mysterious woman who claims that she has a previously undiscovered manuscript by one of the Bronte sisters and then I don't know if a murder happens or what exactly happens but there's obviously some kind of mystery and the detective's life is, life is also in danger, his name is Perry 
and it all sounds like it's going to get very exciting. <laughs> so there's just a lot that ticks boxes for me with this, set in Yorkshire and connected to the Bronte sisters. It sounds like my cup of tea, so I'm looking forward to reading it and hopefully I'll enjoy it. I'll share it with you if I do. Then another Golden Age mystery style book that they've published is Murder Mr. Mosley by John Greenwood. You can see what gorgeous covers they do. I think that this is just really beautiful. And this one sounds really interesting as well. It says, after 17 years, Brenda Quire returns to Parsons Fold with a shadowy past and a mysterious fortune. Shortly afterwards, she is shot dead and one witness, her invalid mother, is missing. The only man available for the job is the slow and old-fashioned Inspector Mosley, but this case is a radical departure for a man more used to locating missing geese than tracking down a cold-blooded murder. So I think that these were actually originally written a bit later, yes, in the 80s, 1983, but they're meant to be in that cosy mystery kind of vein. And I just love this republished edition. So I'm looking forward to giving this one a try as well. And then final one in this series that I've got is The Grove of Eagles, a novel of Elizabethan England by Winston Graham. I spoke about Winston Graham recently on my video about books to read that are set in Cornwall because he of course wrote the Poldark books but I realised that this is another Cornwall book of his that isn't Poldark related but sounds really good full of adventure and intrigue and of course that Cornish setting so I do enjoy Winston Graham's writing and I'm interested to read one of his that is outside of the Poldark series. So I'm looking forward to this one too. It is a bit of a whopper, but hopefully it'll be quite an exciting and page turning read. So I'm looking forward to that. And then I also realized that there's another book set in Cornwall that I really wanted to get and I forgot to get this one, but it's The Weather at Tregula. I hope you, I'm saying that right by Stella Gibbons. As you know, I recently read The Swiss Summer by Stella Gibbons, which I really enjoyed. And this is another of her novels that Dean Street Press have republished, and it's set in Cornwall. So it says, Una Broadbent, 19 years old and desperate to leave the small Cornish town of Tregula to try her luck on the London stage, finds her hopes dashed by her mother's sudden death and its financial implications. She broods about working with her father on their small flower farm, but her boredom melts with the arrival of a womanizing artist, Terence Willows, and his charming sister, Emily. So this just sounds like an intriguing read. I am a big fan of Stella Gibbon's writing, and I'm very curious to try this one, especially as I have been reading a lot of books set in Cornwall lately, so I'll have to add this one to my pile. And then I've heard so many good things about this series. This is The, un un ugh, the Unexpected Inheritance of Inspector Chopra, a Baby Ganesh Agency Investigation by Vaseem Khan. And I've heard that if you're a fan of the number one ladies detective series by Alexander McCall Smith, that these are a good series to try as well and they sound a lot of fun. In this book, Inspector Chopra has actually left a, a baby elephant, I think, in someone's will, <laughs> which sounds hilarious, but they're meant to also be quite gentle and lovely mysteries. So I'm really looking forward to reading this. I think this one is set in Mumbai as well, which I'm also looking forward to reading more about. And I think this will hopefully be quite a nice, cosy kind of read for me as well. So I'm looking forward to that. And then I heard about this book and I was really intrigued by it. And I have to admit that I was also really taken with the gorgeous cover. And this is The Daisy Chain, a novel of the Glasgow Girls by Maggie Ritchie. And so this is a 
fictional book that's inspired by the lives of some of the female artists that made up the Glasgow girls. There were of course the Glasgow boys as well, but I love that this book is about the female artists that made up this set in Glasgow. I really love a lot of the artwork from that era, so I'm really intrigued to read this and learn a bit more about the artists and also hopefully about life in Glasgow. So yes, one that I'm definitely bumping to the top of my to be read pile, though there are a lot at the top, <laughs> but I would like to try and get to this soon as it sounds really good. I got a couple of children's books lately. Of course, I managed the Girls Gone By Publishers Instagram account and so I get sent their books and this is one of the newest out which is Castle in Northumbria by Lorna Hill. This is the fifth title in the Marjorie series of books by Lorna Hill which were children's books published I think in the sort of late 40s early 50s era and they're lovely adventure stories in this one it's the Easter holidays and a group of friends go off camping with their ponies but they also stumble across this amazing ruined castle. They're very gentle stories and I'm really looking forward to reading this one again it's been a long time since I read the Marjorie books so I think I'll have to do a reread. And these editions that have been reprinted by Girls Gone By are very special because Clarissa Cridland, who is one of the founders of Girls Gone By publishers, was left the original manuscripts of these books by Lorna Hill's daughter. And so what Clarissa has done is she's reproduced some of Lorna Hill's original illustrations and her original captions under the illustrations in in these editions which is so special to see what Lorna Hill um, wrote and also the little pictures that she drew because she wrote these books initially for her daughter as birthday and Christmas presents so to have that insight into how she wrote them and a bit of the background to them is really lovely and it's so nice that Clarissa is sharing these manuscripts with all of us essentially. They also include the original illustrations from the published editions of the books by Gilbert Dunlop which is very nice too. So yeah I'm looking forward to getting into this. And then one of the Chalet School books that Girls Gone By have republished most recently is Eustacia Goes to the Chalet School. I've been reading some of the chalets and this one lately and they've been such a balm when I haven't been able to sleep at night because of the tooth. <laughs> I've just in the end turned the Twilight on and read a chalet book and it was just the kind of soothing read that I really have needed this week so that's been lovely. Eustacia is such a funny one because it's about a girl who was brought up by very old fashioned and in many ways rather eccentric parents and she has become an orphan but she's got very odd ideas of the world and she's quite snobbish and she thinks she's much better than other school girls and although in some areas she's very knowledgeable in others she isn't at all but she's very arrogant and she won't take help or advice from anyone. Her aunt despairs of her and sends her off to the chalet school hoping they'll be able to reform her. But Eustacia has a terrible time. In some ways as a reader, particularly an adult reader now, you feel a bit sorry for her because all she wants to do is go off on her own in a corner and read. <laughs> And she gets into a lot of trouble at school for doing that <laughs> and there's a very funny scene where she sort of locks herself into a science laboratory and ends up spilling bottles of chemicals fortunately in fact they turn out not to be chemicals just water but everyone is appalled and uh, she brings down the wrath of the teachers and the other students who say what were you doing here how dare you take the key from the staff room and come in here you don't even do science what are you doing and she just sort of wails I just wanted to read my book <laughs> so you can sympathize a bit with her it's very funny but um 
in the end, Eustacia learns a very hard lesson. However, it does help her to become more of a chalet school girl at heart and she ends up making real friends and actually being a favourite amongst the girls. So yes, this has definitely been a book that I was so happy to get and have been enjoying a lot lately. Another children's book I got recently is The Swallow's Flight by Hilary McKay. I really like her writing and this one is set during World War II and it's about two German boys and I think it's two girls in England, yes, and how their lives sort of eventually interlink during the war and what happens to them and I'm really looking forward to getting to this one. I love literature that's set during the Second World War, as you know, both adult fiction and children's fiction. So I'm keen to read this and I've heard good things about it. And then I was sent some books by publishers, which was really lovely. Batford Books sent me a couple of books of theirs that have just come out. This is Treasury of Folklore, Woodlands and Forests by Dee Dee Cheney and Willow Wincham. And I have the sort of first book in this series, which is Treasury of Folklore, Seas and Rivers. And I really enjoyed that. So I'm really thrilled to get this Woodlands and Forests one. And it's just a collection of customs and superstitions and stories, mythology, um, folklore around woodlands and forests. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot about wolves and witches and Little Red Riding Hood, Hansel and Gretel, all that kind of thing. All of these stories that crop up around woods and forests and also superstitions and things like that. So I'm really fascinated to read this. That will be very good. And then Batsford also sent me this book, which is called Dark Fairy Tales of Fearless Women by Rosamond Curvin. And Rosamond Curvin has gathered together many, many different um, myths and folk tales, many of which were really um, told orally. And she's written them down, but I think she's tried to be very sympathetic to their origins. And they're tales that she's gathered from all over the world, all sorts of different cultures. But what they all share is that they're stories about fearless, brave women and young girls. And I'm really looking forward to reading this. I love that idea. And it just sounds like such a good book to curl up with and to dip into. This would be a really nice gift, I think, too, for any young women in your lives. I think this would be something I would give to a teenager or something like that that I know because they sound like they would be quite inspiring stories as well. So I was really thrilled to get that. And then this was another book that was kindly sent to me by the art artist, Christopher Brown, who's done the amazing cover design on this book and the illustrations inside. And this is called Meet the Georgians, Epic Tales from Britain's Wildest Century by Robert Peel. And this book really looks at Georgian England through the perspective of 12 key characters in history from that time. And it sounds like it's quite a quirky telling of history. And I'm looking forward to diving into this. It sounds like it will be quite a fun, fascinating sort of read. So this is definitely a non-fiction book that I want to get to soon as well. And then another book that was sent to me by the publisher is this poetry anthology, which is called Wonder, the Natural History Museum Poetry Book, and it's edited by Anna Sampson. Anna Sampson has edited a few poetry anthologies I've really enjoy enjoyed. Um, she is fierce. It's one of the ones I've showcased a lot on here. So I'm really intrigued to dive into this one. This actually only just came today. So I haven't had a chance to uh, look at it very much, but it sounds like a really 
interesting book. It says, Wonder is an awe-inspiring collection of poems inspired by the Natural History Museum. The museum's treasures, from dodos to diamonds, from mammals to meteorites, from Archie, the giant squid, to Sophie the Stegosaurus, from hummingbirds to humans, and many, many more, have inspired generations of visitors. These poems about the universe, planet Earth, plants, fossils, dinosaurs, birds, creepy crawlies, mammals, reptiles, oceans, rivers, and humans speak of the wonder of nature and encourage us to look after our incredible planet. And there are poems by Robert McFarlane, for instance, Carol Ann Duff Duffy, William Wordsworth, Sylvia Plath, and Grace Nichols, Christina Rossetti, and many more. So I love nature poems. I mean, I love nature writing generally, but I also really love poems about the natural world. And I think that this is really nice that it's a collection that's been drawn together, inspired specifically by the Natural History Museum. I think that makes it really special. And I love the cover. So yeah, I'm looking forward to diving into this one. I'm sure it will be lovely. And then last weekend, I went to a rare book festival in Ilkley with my mum, which was so much fun. If I have a chance, I'll insert just a few little clips from the festival just in here so that you can have a look because it was really fun to wander around. There were some amazing titles. <laughs> couldn't buy very much because a lot of them were very pricey but I sort of drooled over a lot of them. So I'll insert a few clips for you here and then I will share what I did buy with you all. Okay, so you can see it was a fabulous festival and I came away with four books that we picked up. The first one is What to Look For in Winter. I always look out for these ladybird books, they're quite rare. I know I had them all as a child, so it's a bit frustrating that I'm collecting them again. But I was so pleased to see this one, I don't have this, so... I was really glad to pick it up and it's in lovely edition, they're hard to find with dust wrappers. So I was really thrilled and the illustrations are just so gorgeous in these ladybird books that, that I just find them very very special and I love to use them in photographs, they're just a bit nostalgic for me too, I read so many ladybird books when I was little. So I always pick ones up like that if I see them and it was very reasonably priced which was lovely. And then I picked up this Jill pony book, Jill's Jim Carner by Ruby Ferguson. was so pleased to get this one, it's got a lovely dust wrapper and it's been ages since I read a Jill book. I adored these when I was young and I have a few of the original illustrations from some of the Jill books which are very special to me. So I was really thrilled to find this one. I have a lot of these books but they're all in New York still and, I, and they're hard for me to get <laughs> over here. So when I see just a really nice copy then I pick one up. Then I got a Miss Reed book that I realised I didn't have which is Changes at Fairacre. I didn't have it in a really nice edition and this one is just perfect. I was so thrilled to find this really reasonably. I love the cover, that pink cottage is just gorgeous. Sorry it's a bit shiny, I haven't taken off the plastic wrap on this one yet which I normally do because I find even though it's meant to protect the books, I actually find they, the, the wrapping can damage the books in the long run. So I generally like to take them off. And then the last book that I got is The Nunsuch by Georgette Hare. 
This is the first edition. I love the covers of the originals and I was so pleased to pick up this one because The Nun, the Nun Such is one of the books. I think Venetia is also set near Harrogate and so is The Nun Such. It's one of my favourites too and I just love that it's set in Yorkshire and it's one that I've been wanting to reread for a while so I was really pleased to get it. I'm in a bit of a Georgette hair kick right now because that's what I'm listening to as my audiobook at the moment. I've almost finished The Grand Sophie which has been really fun so I was thrilled to get this one at the Rare Book Festival which I highly recommend by the way. It was so well done and yes um, mum and I really loved having a nosy around of course and picking up a few books it made for a really fun outing and I hope there will be more they obviously weren't able to do any last year so it was great that they could do one this year but anyway that is my book haul <laughs> my summer book haul for you let me know if any of these titles take your eye which ones you're particularly interested in or if you've been buying any books lately that you think I would enjoy I'd love to know I hope you have a wonderful weekend ahead of you thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next week do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and it would be lovely if you enjoyed this to also consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already and you can do that by clicking on my face that pops up on the screen but I'll see you again very soon goodbye